It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Larry Lesseur from the CBS Television News Staff and Associated Press Correspondent Francis W. Carpenter covering the United Nations. Our distinguished guest for this evening is Dr. Charles Malik, Ambassador from Lebanon to the United States. Dr. Malik, Lebanon is a country about the size of New Hampshire with a population of about two million, I guess. Could you tell us something about the role of Lebanon in the Middle East? Well, Mr. Lesseur, uh, I don't know whether it's really as big as New Hampshire, but it's a very small country. And as to its population, it's, it's not quite two million yet. Uh, it may be nearer a million and a half. But it's a small country, both in size and in population. Yet its importance in the Near East, and I dare say in the world at large, cannot be measured by either its size or its population. For it is a unique country in the Near East. It's a country that is half Christian and half Muslim. It's the only country like this in the Middle East and in fact in history where you have these two religions meeting with each other on a basis of complete equality and mutual respect. The Christians in Lebanon participate in Western culture and Western spirituality to the full. The Muslims, who are very vigorous citizens in my country, they participate in Islam and in Eastern culture. So I should say the most important thing about Lebanon is that how these two outlooks, how East and West, meet together in freedom and in perfect mutual respect. The second thing about it is that everywhere, whether in the Arab League, to which we belong, or in the United Nations, or in any international gatherings, we try to play a moderating and mediating role. Because we believe that in the end, only such a policy is successful and worth pursuing. And finally, I will add one word, and that is about freedom. Lebanon is uh, famous for its freedom in all of its phases. People can think what they like, they can express what they think, and they can, uh, they can live as they please. So I should say, as a moderating influence, as a place where East and, and West really meet and mingle in freedom, and as a place where freedom can flourish, Lebanon is really a unique little country in the world. Well, Dr. Malik, uh, could we follow that up a little bit? And can you tell me, is the Middle East itself stable and secure at the moment? Is it in a stable situation? Well, now, I, uh, I take it you mean by secure uh, whether it is in danger of external attack or of internal uh, eruptions. Is that what you mean? Yes, I'm thinking mostly of the internal situation. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about aggression at the moment from any quarter. But is there is a ferment in the Middle East, or are they politically stable and calm at the moment? Well, of course, there is calm and stability, but I think it's more apparent than real at mm -hmm. the present moment, because we still have terrific problems throughout that whole area. First of all, we have not yet uh, related ourselves uh, on any permanent basis with the outside world. Uh, it is still a question as to how we should be related to Europe, America, or to the communist world. We are still uh, unrelated in any permanent manner uh, to any of these worlds. Uh, secondly, even our relations among ourselves have not been fully stabilized. So it is a question also what sort of order among the countries and peoples and nations in that area is going to emerge in the next few years. Well, Dr. Malik, do you think uh at the moment that the question of French Morocco and France's relations with its protectorate is capable of settlement? Well, it is capable of settlement if the French are going to yield, yes. But I find it very difficult uh, for, the, for the French at the present moment with all their internal problems 
and their relations to the to the to the African protectorates uh, to uh, uh, to to proceed with any great hope for an immediate uh, settlement of the problem. So I am rather pessimistic about the immediate outlook, but in the long run there must be a settlement because it is a problem capable of settlement if there is goodwill all around. Uh, Mr. Malik, uh, you're not only the uh, ambassador to the United States from your country, you're the ambassador to the United Nations from Lebanon, and as that ambassador, you're also entitled to a seat on the Security Council. Now, do you think that the problem of Trieste, which is coming up in the Security Council tomorrow, is capable of settlement there? Well, I marvel at, uh, at your desire to see every problem capable of settlement, and, <laughs> and immediately. I don't know. I know very little about Trieste. This thing has uh, come up all of a sudden to us in the Council. I'm going to study it this weekend. Again, there are great uh, difficulties there, but I'm not uh, as pessimistic in that problem as I am with regard to some of these other issues. So I think some kind of a modus vivendi will be worked out between Yugoslavia and Italy and the other interested parties. Uh, could I go back to Morocco? Uh, the Arabs in their contentions to the Security Council said that Morocco is a threat to international peace and security. Well now, sir, uh, taking for granted that you have argued that uh, from all the evidence of the case, does it really appear that Morocco is really a threat to the international peace? There's no war there, there's no <laughs> aggression anywhere. Well, I don't think the Security Council, Mr. Carpenter, should be seized only of those issues which deal with war or with real threat to security. The Charter says uh, any situation that is likely to produce international friction or international disputes. Now, certainly Morocco is producing lots of friction and lots of disputes That's among true. nations. And therefore, from that angle, it is certainly worthy of examination both by the Security Council and by the General Assembly. Well, Dr. Malik, you're not only a diplomat, you're also known as a philosopher. Could you tell us, do you believe that coexistence is really possible between the communist world and the free world? If you, if you want my most honest opinion, I'll tell it to you, although I am uh, seen in television now. I believe unless there is a radical, fundamental change of heart, in Marxist practice and theory throughout the communist world, I honestly do not see how, in the long run, peaceful coexistence is possible. Do you, do you see any changes in the uh, Marxist philosophy now? I don't see any changes in the fundamental Marxist theory, no. I, uh, I, I read whatever literature I can get uh, hold of, and I read certainly the pronouncements of the great masters, living and dead, and I think uh, it, it's still the same old Marxist doctrine. Well, there have been flutterings of the dove of peace since Stalin died. You think then that those are just flutterings, that the spirit of world domination is still there in the communist? Well, I read Marx and I read Lenin and I read Stalin rather carefully, as much of them as I could. And uh, I, I, I do not believe that these men honestly believe that there can be peace until they have communized the whole world. And that's what they say. I'm not saying that. They are, uh, it's they who first said it. And Dr. Malik, beside being a diplomat, you were also the chairman of the committee that wrote the Declaration of Human Rights back in 1948. Have you seen any progress in human rights since that declaration was first presented? Uh, in the United Nations, so far as developing uh, documents of, le of legal binding force is concerned, we have not made much progress during the last five years. But I can assure you that the influence of that humble declaration, which we proclaimed five years ago, has been most incalculable throughout the world. I would like to pay a tribute to you at this time because I watched you work during three long months of working that document out. And I think that uh, a, great, a great part of its uh, value is due to the ideas you contributed. Do you go around the country making speeches from time to time, uh, Mr. Ambassador? Could you tell us uh, what, in your opinion, is the current state of American opinion of the UN at this time? I frankly am a bit discouraged because I find people losing faith in the United Nations at the present moment. I, I, don't, I, don't, think, I don't think it's worth strengthen this world organization and make it the real instrument that it should be. 
but there is a real slump in the feeling of the American people about this matter. Well, Dr. Malik, do you feel that there's any relaxation in the world tensions at this time? Yes, there is some relaxation, but it may be very deceptive and we should be most careful not to allow it to lull us into premature letting down our God. Well, Dr. Malik, may I ask you one final question? Could you tell us what the Arab nations really want from the United States? Well, I think they really want simple things, Mr. Lesser. They want justice, namely that they, do not that they do not feel at the present moment that they have been justly treated. They want freedom, namely wherever there is a problem where their own liberties are at stake, they f want to feel that the United States would help them to achieve freedom. They want a sense of equality with the rest of the world so that people can respect them on the basis of equality. They do not feel that. And finally, they want closer cooperation among themselves. And they would hope that the United States and the other Western powers will not stand in the way of developing whatever natural closer relations they can develop among themselves. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Charles Malik. We've been very glad to have you here tonight. The opinions you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lesser of the CBS television news staff and Associated Press correspondent Francis W. Parker, Carpenter. Our distinguished guest was Dr. Charles Malik, ambassador from Lebanon to the United States. <coughs> To watchmakers of the old school, such as Longines, pride of workmanship is a traditional attribute of every detail of every operation. In truth, the smallest cog in a watch is just as important as the biggest wheel. Pride of workmanship made Longines the world's most honored watch. Honored at world's fairs by 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medals. Honored at government observatories with countless prizes and citations for accuracy. Honored as official watch of leading sports and contest associations the world over. For you who have an appreciation of the fine and the beautiful, the pride of workmanship, so evident in every laundry and watch, makes an irresistible appeal. And our particular message at this time is an important one. If you wish to buy and own, or proudly give a truly fine watch, you may select a laundry watch for as little as $71.50. And regardless of the price you pay for that Longines watch, it is made with that pride of workmanship which has made Longines the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift. Longines, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Wetnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longines and Wetnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. History repeated, and you are there, Sundays on the CBS television network.